Oh, hello guys. Alright, so this is going to be a bit of a different type of video than normal. Um, as it will say in the title, um, I was thinking about titling it, I broke my number one rule because yesterday I broke my number one rule, which is safety. Um, first of all, I just want to say, you know, if you've been keeping up on my videos or if you go back and watch the first video or two I explain that I do penetration testing to show you guys out there an example of what kind of power is held behind these CO2 guns now I'm not anti CO2 gun I love having them they're still cool as hell to me but yesterday I actually shot myself at point blank range in the finger with this very gun right here this Colt M45 government model um, made by Umarex USA um, I had it out just like this to do the review so what happened was anyways yesterday I was gonna do the review on this and I did the first take I did the review I showed you guys how I do in all my videos how to load the CO2 how to load BBs but then toward the end of the video I forgot, I realized that I had left out some information that I really wanted to give you guys about this gun. So I decided to go in my bedroom, take a break for 10 minutes, sit down, and just relax before I jumped into take two. But what happened was I was so focused on the fact that I had to do this t the whole review again that I broke my number one rule and forgot that I had already loaded this with a fresh CO2 cartridge, had the whole thing loaded, fully, fully loaded, fresh CO2 cartridge. So when I came to do the take two, the hammer was back because in the video I showed you, um, oh, I was gonna show you how to pull the hammer back and everything. So when I came to do the take two, it wasn't even a thought in my head. I grabbed the gun like this, and I just noticed the hammer was back so I figured I'd reset it for the video so I took it off safety and I pulled the trigger and I shot myself right there right in the base of my finger um I wasn't gonna I was debating on doing this video but you know I always emphasize safety with these things in my videos so I figured I'd use myself as a prime example as to what I mean when I say treat these things like the real thing because you can seriously injure yourself um, even if you think even if you know that it's empty just check anyway because I mean what how long does it take you to take that off and put it back on you know or to pop the mag out and just look you know just check always be safe because yesterday I was so focused on doing the second take that I literally just pulled the trigger point blank range now this thing the Colt M45 I believe maxes out it it was either 400 or 410 FPS so I had my hand like that and I just noticed when I came to do the take two that the hammer was back so what I did was I just picked it up like this. I didn't really pay attention to how my hand was gripping it. I just had it in any particular way. So I noticed the hammer was back. So I took it off safety and bam, pulled the trigger. Forgot that it was loaded, had BBs, had steel BBs in it. And I shot myself in the finger right at the base. And I, I will show you. Um, and it is still inside me. I went to the hospital yesterday. They did x-rays. They said that the bone, I mean that the BB hit the bone, but it wasn't traveling fast enough to actually break the bone. So nothing's broken. I can move my hand, but my finger this morning cannot lift any higher than that, or I can't make a fist fully. It is totally swollen. I don't know if you could see that well on camera, but here, if you look at this hand, you can see the difference. This is all swollen and puffy, black and blue. Um, I was actually just going to redress this wound, so I'm going to take this band-aid off. So if you get a little squeamish, don't look, because I'm going to show you. It's not that bad. Um, obviously, it's bad to do this, but this is the injury right there. As you can see, the BB entered right at the base of my finger. Um, it was literally point blank like that. Um, I was gripping this thing basically. Um, 
it's still in there. Uh, my finger is totally swollen up. Um, it's just really messed up right now. Um, so I figured, hey, you know what? I'm going to show the people what happened and use myself as a prime example as to what I always emphasize in my own videos in, and that's safety, gun safety, whether it's a CO2 gun or a real gun. Doesn't matter if you, like I said, it doesn't matter if you think it's loaded or unloaded. Just check anyway. It doesn't take time to just check. It takes a second. And I broke my cardinal rule and I wanted to show you guys what happens. Now, I have to wait until today's Tuesday. I have to wait till next Tuesday now. To, to go to the doctor, that was the only time they could see me, it was next Tuesday. Um, they did say in the x-rays that nothing was broken, the bone had stopped the BB. Um, it wasn't traveling fast enough to actually penetrate the bone, but it went through all the soft tissue. So now, there's definitely some nerve damage, so I have to see a hand um, specialist, because this whole side of my hand now is pins and needles, like it's tingly. Um, I can't move it. That's probably the swelling. Uh, it, it won't go down any. It hurts like right about there. And then yesterday I was able to make like a flat hand, but now I can't. It doesn't want to like bend. Um, so, you know, I mean, right now it, it may not look so bad. You know, you could obviously see the entrance wound. Um, thankfully there was no exit wound, but now I have to go see because, uh, you know, something like this could easily kill you, you know, like, thank God it was my finger, and, you know, I had my girlfriend sitting right next to me at the time, like, I would have been devastated if it was her, or something, you know, like, thank God that my hand took the hit, um, obviously it was scary, um, it happened very quickly, like, there was no thought behind pulling the trigger, I just wasn't thinking, I was thinking about take two, and, I just totally forgot, like, hey, you just loaded this thing on camera for the first take. So, um, blood sprayed everywhere. Um, I will let you know when you get shot with a CO2 gun. I don't know if it's because of the blast of CO2 coming out, but blood just sprayed everywhere and came gushing out of my hand. Like, it was all over the place. Um... But I also wanted to tell you guys, not to show you this injury, um, which I should probably not uh, keep exposed too long, so I'm going to make this short. But I wanted to tell you how I dealt with it. So if this ever happens to you, you know, you know what to do right away. So instantly, as soon as I, I, got, I got shot with the BB, like instantly, it was like survival mode just kicked in. I ran straight to the sink and instantly ran in underwater. I had my girlfriend, while I had it underwater, she ran and got a rag, you tourniquet, you make a tourniquet and just wrap it as tight as you can. And then you just, luckily the hospital is a five minute walk from us, so we were able to just walk there very quickly. Um, it took us like maybe under 10 minutes to get the bleeding under control and get to the hospital. Um, it did bleed a little more when I got to the hospital, but it had stopped bleeding at some point. Um, so right now, it's just pretty damaged. You know, it just took that blow yesterday, so obviously today it's going to be stiff and swollen. Um, but what I was going to say, too, is, you know, uh, the emergency room, what they did was they just prescribed me antibiotics, and they gave me a referral to a hand specialist. Um... So, like I said, just make sure you keep the area clean. Clean, clean, clean. Make sure it stays clean. Like, no bacteria. If you have hydrogen peroxide in your house, like, if you're ever in a situation like me now where I have to wait a week, a full week, till next Tuesday with this BB inside my finger doing God knows what type of damage, um... You want to have hydrogen peroxide, you want to make sure that you go to the hospital because that is the only way you're going to be able to get antibiotics. You do not want to get an infection and have it go septic or anything like that. You could lose your finger um, or worse, sometimes it's happened. Um, and here's a prime example, you know, um, someone who, you know, shows you penetration testing and everything, you know, like, 
that was the whole point behind it was to show you what kind of power these things have and it's not because I you know am anti-gun or anything it was just because I think a lot of kids are unaware nowadays and it's easy to get a hold of these things like anybody can go on Amazon and just order this you know um so just be super careful sorry if you're a little squeamish um Eventually, I'll get to the review, but for the next couple of days, I think I'm just going to relax, let my finger heal. I'm just going to hang out and just chill, um, and I'll be back with you guys. I'm still going to do the review on this. Uh, I want to keep up my channel because you guys have been awesome. Um, you guys have been so friendly to me on so far. Like, every comment I've got was really cool, and, you know, just I appreciate the views and everything, but... Yeah, you know, I wanted to show you what happened here and, um, you know, give you a first-hand account of why I do these videos. You know, of course it's to review the guns, but the penetration testing anyway. Um, obviously I'm not going to willingly penetrate my body with one of these, you know, but since it happened by accident yesterday, here, now I get to show you a prime example as to what I mean and why I always emphasize being safe with these. Um... They come with these warnings for a reason, and you should pay close attention to that. So, um, anyways, guys, so this is the Colt M45. That's my messed up finger. Um, this is Paul for Replica Gun Reviews, and I will see you in a few days, hopefully. Um, uh, wish me luck and everything, and peace, I guess. I do it with my other hand, but I can't. <laughs> so, peace. So, as you can see, I'm here in my bathroom. I figured, uh, since I'm going to redress this, I wanted to show you. Um, as I said, I had to wait. I have to wait now a whole week um, to see the doctor for this. It's all pins and needles. So, what you need, what you, preferably, if you have it at home, um, unfortunately, I don't have everything that I would prefer to have, um, like rubbing alcohol. I do have sterile wiping pads, though, luckily. Um, but you're going to want hydrogen peroxide for sure, obviously, to kill any infection. If you can get it, um, sometimes at your job you may have these, um, but you want these little iodine capsules that you just break and then you dab onto the wound. Um, and then obviously t yesterday I had it wrapped up in a tourniquet really tight all day and all night so today I figured I'd give it a little breathing room so I've been only using a band-aid um, after I clean up the hydrogen peroxide and the iodine I put just a small dab of neosporin it's the only topical um, antibiotic cream I have at the moment so it's better than nothing like on the wound and then you put the band-aid over it um, so I'm going to do this right now on camera for you just to show you what to do. So first of all, you want to clean everything. Um, bear with me here because it's kind of hard to do things with this hand at the moment. But just, just run water over it like this. Um, if you have some hand soap, obviously, take some hand soap. Just apply it gently. Don't go crazy and hurt yourself more. You know, I have to wait a week to find out what the, I guess, actual severity of this wound is going to be, so you don't want to hurt it more. Um, if you do feel the pins and needle feeling, obviously there's nerve damage, it went through the tissue, so you want to always just, just keep rubbing it. If you have to wait like a week like I do, just keep rubbing it, use it as much as possible. Uh, just make sure you try to use it as much as possible. Don't keep it still because it can permanently, if, if you injure your hand like this, you know, sometimes it can permanently get stuck like that if you don't use it. Um, so you want to keep, keep it moving. Um, the swelling is impeding my movement right now, so obviously I'm not going to force it. This is the day after. but. Um, once you get the soap on there, you let it sit for a sec like that. Then you just want to wash that off. Um, then what I do, um, I'm not, you know, sure if there's a specific uh, way to do this. Like I, whether I should do the iodine first and then the peroxide. But I always just do the peroxide first. So you just take the peroxide, pour it right into there. It might sting. This mine's not stinging. Uh, I don't feel anything like right there. Um, 
but you can see it bubbling up a little bit so I'm pretty sure you can see the wound now a little better um, just pour it on there like that just let it sit let it bubble up the more it bubbles up the better um, obviously because then you know it's killing bacteria and infection uh, when you see the bubbles that's the hydrogen peroxide interacting with um, bacteria and stuff so um, I do that um, then I again rinse now what I do is I dry my hand it takes a little bit and I have to be soft because you know again I injured my finger so I don't want to injure it more so just dab around it. the injury site don't go crazy um, you know you don't want to hurt yourself any further um, and as I said even though I think you should move like this when you feel the pins and needles um, don't force it just do let it let it regain its movement on its own wait for the swelling to go down if the swelling persists for more than a couple of days then the injury is persisting then you should go back to the hospital ASAP um, because the swelling should go down but uh, let me just grab some more toilet paper so I could you know just uh now I, what what you do is you take this little iodine capsule usually they come in a tube like this you just take it out it has a cotton swab at the end sorry if my camera is not focusing correctly here but um you crack it like that and then you just let it go on the wound you just cover the area with it like that it looks like blood the iodine a little bit um it comes out like slightly the same color but it's not so sorry again if you guys are a bit squeamish but I want to show you how to treat yourself at home the best you can like with what you have if you have this stuff you know um, luckily I got these things because of my job um, I'm a maintenance person so I cut myself a lot so um, I dealt with pretty bad injuries uh, I've had one injury at work that was definitely worse than this even I say um, or I stabbed myself in the knee with a piece of glass that was in a garbage bag um, let me just throw this capsule away real quick. I just gotta move away from the camera. But yeah, one day I was lifting a garbage bag at work and I decided to use my knee to help lift it because it was super heavy. It came out of a compactor so it was long and there just happened to be a piece of glass that went right into the soft spot under your kneecap hit my tendons um, the next morning I couldn't even walk at all so I expected this um, I expected the stiffness um, and the swelling so that's natural you want to keep an eye out on the wound for the color make sure you always see white and pink like that you know you don't if you see any black obviously or anything that just looks out of the norm like you should see black and blue obviously you're going to see the red the pink meat inside and some of the white from the skin around it that's broken um that's natural obviously that'll go away quickly um but if you start seeing colors like green or obviously black um then you should have already been to the hospital um and taking antibiotics um they usually give you clindamycin which is best for um best for bacteria amoxicillin they say isn't the best for bacteria or you know possible bacterial infections but once you have it dried up anyway like this now like I said I take my neosporin and I just simply apply a very little bit just cause you don't want I don't want to soak it I want to like let it heal a little bit um, I don't know what to do honestly right now. I have to wait a whole week. Like I don't know if they're taking this thing out of me or they're gonna leave it in or what. So you know, I was hoping that it would have came out sooner while there was still an open wound and they don't have to reopen a wound, but if I have to wait a week, I'd rather have a healed wound when I get there and just have them do the surgery than a a wound that's been open for a whole week, you know. So um put a little Neosporin on there, you don't want to rub it all off. 
right? Just enough, just so that the band-aid still sticks. Um, get yourself a little band-aid. Today I want to give it a little breathing room. And again, bear with me, because my finger is killing me, and it is hard to, like, do anything. I've been trying to play PlayStation all day just to use, like, get the motion. I figured the PS4 controller would help me. Um, but it, it, it is, and, it, it, and I gotta say, it, it works, but uh, it sucks still. It's so painful. Like, it's stiff and just you know, really swollen. Uh, it's not painful when it's still. It's just painful when I try to, like, make a fist or if I try to... I can't flatten my hand like this or make a full fist. It doesn't go, like, right there. It starts hurting. And then when I open my hand, right there, it starts hurting. Like, I have to force it up. Um, they did say nothing was broken again, but still, there's a 4.5 millimeter projectile in my finger and it's in the spot that it's in worries me because it's at a joint um i would have much rather had it in the centers um but unfortunately you went right into the base um i don't think because yesterday i was still able to make a fist um right after the wound happened i was still able to flatten my hand i think it's just the swelling impeding me now so as they said in the x-ray, nothing is broken, so I'm pretty sure once the swelling is gone that I'll get that movement back. But um, anyways guys, that's how you clean your wound. Um, you want to keep it that way. Just keep it clean, it's a pain in the ass. I know I like to have to go through all this, especially when it hurts. But um, you know, it's just best to keep it clean until you get to the doctor, you know, and get that pellet out of you. Um, so anyways guys, that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you a first hand account how to clean uh, a pellet gun wound and you know a first hand account of a wound. You know, and as again I always emphasize safety and here's an example as to why. Um, and I can't believe I did it to myself, which is the ironic part. It really is. It's like I'm the one making videos talking about safety and there I go shoot myself in the finger way to go but um anyways guys uh i'll keep you updated again um if you've been watching my videos uh the penetration testing i've been doing i think i'm not sure you guys could comment below let me know if you've seen enough if you've seen a couple of my videos i always use the same items to keep the conditions the same um but now that i have an example unfortunately to show you uh, I don't have to use everyday objects anymore. Now I can actually show you what happens. Um, and, um, obviously this sucks a lot. Like, man, I wish I was thinking more. Um, I was just so frustrated that I had to do that first take over again. And I was so in the moment. I was like, alright, I got this. I got this second take. I just, it just slipped my mind. It wasn't even a thought that the CO2 cartridge was fresh and that there was a fresh mag in there. And I just pulled that trigger on it. I wanted to decock it just so I could show you guys again. And I just wasn't thinking. And now here I am dealing with it the next day. I scared the hell out of my girlfriend yesterday. I mean, God, you should have seen the blood coming out. Hands just bleed so unnecessarily much. I don't know why, but, um... Anyways, guys, peace. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Don't ever let this happen to you. Be very, very safe. And always keep in mind people around you when you have a CO2 gun out or around, if you have one out or around. Mind people around you. Mind where the barrel is aiming. You never know. They're not real guns, you know. There's misfires happen. A lot of things can happen, you know. And as you can see, it sucks. Like, this is so whack right now. Um, like, I have things to do, and now, like, I can't move my finger. Um, so, anyway, guys. Again, peace. And sorry for this uh, video, if it was a little squeamish to you. But uh, I wanted to give you a prime example as to what I'm talking about all the time. Um, so anyways, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Stay cool, stay awesome. Hey everybody, um, so 
this is now the next day, um, after I, or this is two days now after, um, I actually shot myself with the BB. I figured I'd just do a little update because I wanted to put more peroxide on it. Um, I've been doing it a couple times a day, like I said, but it's actually looking better. Um, the black and blue is going away. The swelling went down slightly, so it's giving me a little bit more mobility again in my hand, or more than I had yesterday anyway, so I feel it getting better. But um, as I said, you still want to put the peroxide on there just anyway, you know, because you're cleaning your house, when you sleep, you know, there's particles in the air, anything can happen. So just keep it clean um, and, and cover it up. You want to let it breathe too, you know, you don't want to keep it too tight for too long. Only keep it tight when you get the initial injury, you know, just till the bleeding is under control. And maybe for a little after that, but um, you want to let that heal on its own. Um, only thing that sucks is like you know the BB is still in there, so it's I still can't open my hand like fully like that. Like I can't bend my finger upwards more than like, it starts hurting there. And to make a it fist, it's already stiff, but you can see the swelling is probably stopping that. Um, but uh yeah i got six days to go left till i see the doctor um i just have the feeling to be honest at this point after this morning seeing as how this is healing up that this thing is, might honestly maybe not be totally healed but it might be healed by the time i get to this doctor um and i don't know if they're just gonna leave the bp in there or what i don't know what they do um the tingly feeling in my finger is still persisting um i want to say it feels a little better but it it's very slight uh, it's still tingly clearly nerve damage got done you know that went through all the soft tissue um but um again folks yeah this is what i emphasize you know um so i was thinking also you know overnight you know the penetration testing I do, you know, the point of it in my first video I said was to show you guys, if you didn't know already, what kind of power is held behind, um, you know, these BB guns when you get them so that you don't hurt yourself. And obviously I was never going to penetrate on myself to show you, so I figured if I used everyday objects, you know, you can get the idea of what would happen to your skin. If we could do that to a cell phone or a laptop or something. Um, but now that I accidentally did this, as I said, I figured I'd rethink a little bit my channel and be a little bit more careful. Um, I watched some of my videos last night again and I noticed myself at times in videos holding the muzzle with my finger on the trigger. And now, you know, after this, like, I am afraid to even have my hand near the muzzle with my finger close to the trigger even um so it's firmly in my head now i guess sometimes you just gotta learn the hard way to really get um you know really drill it into your head and unfortunately i had to um you know you just can't get distracted when it comes to things like that you have to keep that in mind always you know you can't let the fact that you just have to do a second take on a video you know distract you from the point that you could actually injure yourself um so just be careful and mindful guys as i always say because i mean this sucks but uh, it could have been a lot worse you know it could have hit someone else like i said um i have pets it could have done anything you know um thank god it, i'm glad i took it rather than someone else but um Again, guys, just keep it clean. Um, if you have to wait like me, just keep doing what I'm doing twice a day. Just clean it, rebandage it, check the color. It should still be like reddish, you know, pink like your meat, and then have that little white dead skin around it. Um, the black and blue should be going away. Like I said, the swelling, if it doesn't go down, that means the injury is persisting. If the swelling starts going down, that means that your finger's healing. Um, you want to keep it moving too because you can get stuck in a position if it heals. If you did a uh, certain type of damage, I believe if you hit like a tendon or a ligament, you, you want to keep that moving, you know, because you can end up getting real stuck in that position. But um, don't force it. So 
what I've been doing is just playing the PlayStation because it's giving me the use of my fingers and I'm able to focus on the TV rather than my pain a little bit. So it's been making me move my fingers rather than just watching TV and relaxing and having it sit still, you know? Um, also, I know there's no science really behind it, but I think just, just going outside every now and then, giving it some fresh air helps. I don't know why. Yesterday morning I went out and uh, it just felt good. I don't know why. My fingers started feeling better when the wind was hitting it. Um, so, yeah, you know, just let it heal, keep it clean, and that's it. I just wanted to give you guys a little update. Um, I'm probably not going to do this until I get to the doctor. Or maybe I will. I don't know. Um... But um, I'll put this out maybe after today or tomorrow. And then if you guys are interested in a part two to see what happened after I left the doctor, like whether they took it out, left it in, etc., you guys just let me know in the comments. And I will get back to my reviews on the CO2 guns. I just, like I said, I just wanted to give myself a day or two to just let my fingers heal so that I could actually maneuver on camera like I should. Um, I want the swelling to go down, but... um. Again, I really appreciate my channel. It's so new. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys. You guys have been awesome. Everybody who's commented has been really kind. Like I said, um, I've gotten a lot of views, even just in my first few videos. Um, and I didn't even think they were that great. These are my first videos ever that I've made. So I really, really appreciate you guys. I cannot tell you that enough. Um, you know, I just thought it was a cool idea. I started getting into CO2 guns, and I realized, you know, how cool they look. You know, I can't get real guns. I can't afford to go out and buy all these weapons. You know, that would cost thousands of dollars. So, you know, replicas are cool. You know, I mean, they're not deadly. Well, they are. They can be deadly. As you can see, you can cause seriously bo serious bodily harm. But, you know what I mean. Um, you know, uh... I mean, if you can't get the real thing, what's better than a replica, you know? Um, so anyways, guys, so this is, uh, yeah, day three now of the injury. Um, and, yeah, the pellet's still in there. I'm just hoping that, you know, it is the swelling that's impeding my movement fully. And I'm hoping the BB's not somewhere that's going to, like, do more damage if I move it. But um, I will keep you guys updated and let you know. And then, um... When I get, when I start feeling a little swelling go down more, I'll do the review on the Colt 45, and then I'll move up and continue on. But, um, again, guys, thank you. I love you all. Peace. And, you know, thanks for watching this channel a lot. I really appreciate that, guys. Hey, guys. Um, so, now this is, uh, day four of the injury. Um. I just wanted to change the band-aid. Um, I just got back from CVS. I picked up uh, my antibiotics, which I'll show you in a second. Um, they're the ones that are best for fighting infections. Um, let me just aim my camera down a little bit um, so I can show you everything that I have again. And I'll show you what the wound looks like now. Uh, the band-aid keeps falling off. Um, I left it dry this time last night. Um, I didn't put any um, ointment on it. I wanted to let the wound heal, but I'm not sure if you could tell, but uh, two days ago anyway, you could see a straight hole right through. Now the pink inside has closed up. Um, the swelling has gone down significantly, but you, as you can see, it's still puffy right here. Um, this, by the way, is the antibiotic. Um, it's called, my name is Paul McCarthy. Yes, not like the beetle. It's not McCartney. I get that all my life. But um, this is the uh, uh, antibiotic. It's called cephalexin. And nobody come to my house, please. Or unless you're nice. <clears throat> um, but um, they look like this. Uh, they're like a two-tone green color says lupin on one side but this is best for fi fighting anti uh, bacterial infections or anything like that uh, if you ever have a wound like this um, but yeah definitely go to the doctor never skip that part um, you need that for sure um, so again what I want to do um, as an update first of all I could tell you for sure the swelling is going down which is a good thing the black and blue is 
it's not translating on camera but it's a little dark in this area um as you can see I can move it fast today yesterday I wasn't able to move it that fast um so it's definitely getting better but as you can see the swelling stops it is too puffy to like close all the way um now I could sort of make a flat hand it strains it, it like it doesn't want to align with the other fingers fully yet but uh, I'm not gonna force it um, the tingliness is still there the pins and needles but it is going down but um yeah anyways guys so I wanted to uh, just uh, again just show you an update um, keep you updated on what I do again just keep using the peroxide do this twice a day um, especially if you're cleaning or doing things like that like um, see it's fizzing up a little bit not bad but you know um, you want to make sure you can keep, keep that site clean I had already washed it previously so I skipped that part in the video um, but yeah, you see that fizziness? Um, let me just grab some toilet paper real quick. So yeah, um, you let that fizz up a little bit, um, pour a little more. You don't have to pour it necessarily if you have a, if you want to pour it in a cap so you don't waste as much as I am, you can, but um, peroxide is pretty cheap. Um, let that fizz up for a second, um, you do that. I took my antibiotic again this morning, so I have to take it again this afternoon. Um, you take it twice a day. Amoxicillin you take three times a day, but again, um, if that's all you have in your house, if you do skip the hospital, which you shouldn't, um, it's better than nothing, you know, but um, you really should have some of this. Um, it's called Cephalex, and that's what's best for, you know, because you know the peroxide the ointment the iodine is for the outside but you need something in your bloodstream to help you like to fight from the inside you know um as well so you want to keep the inside and the outside bacteria free or as bacteria free as possible so um yeah let me just pour a little more as you can see the fizzing is not it's not reacting as much so I do it basically until it stops reacting and stops turning white uh, and then you just wipe it away uh, gently uh, make sure that the, the tissue that you're wiping with as well is clean you know you don't use uh, tissue that you laid down anywhere um, and then uh, again uh, I don't know if it's necessary at this date but hey it can't hurt you know to use these iodine capsules see what I mean guys it looks just like blood it's a little, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's like, it, I think dogs make this naturally in their bodies. This is what sustains their eyes, and, uh, it's in their saliva, I believe, as well. But, um, yeah, see, I like to open and close it just to make sure it gets in the cracks in the hole or the wound, you know? Um, this stuff is a pain cleaning. It turns brown, and it does stain your skin a little bit if you keep it on too long. Um. Again, um, as you saw in the beginning of the video, I am not a doctor, so certainly go to the ER or your doctor immediately if this happens to you. Um, luckily, it was just my finger, um, but you know, if you ever get shot in the stomach area or the head, especially, um, you know, or the chest, for sure, go to the hospital or the back. Um, your leg has arteries in it. You know, definitely go to the hospital. You have to. Um, you know, whether you think you might get in trouble or not, it doesn't matter. Your, your health comes first. Um, so let me just toss this capsule out real quick and then wash this off. So yeah, then uh, just run the sink, just clean up this extra iodine. Uh, it comes right off like that. Um, grab a little tub of paper. You know, you could just run it under the water, it doesn't hurt. Clean it off that way. Um, I don't want to make it too hot, you know, if you don't want to make it scalding. Um, by the way, uh, one thing I have been doing this past few days is I have been exposing my finger to like ice and uh, not necessarily hot, hot stuff, but like putting my finger on like purposely hot cups of coffee. 
Uh, just to give my feeling, my finger feeling, you know, like rubbing it, as I said, when you feel that tingling, it's, um, sorry, pardon me, <laughs> I just finished eating breakfast, so I got a little bit of, uh, indigestion, I guess, um, so I have the hiccups now, but, um, anyways, if you feel that tingliness, nerve damage was done, obviously, so you want to keep your finger moving, touch it, rub it, as much as possible, you know, just to give it sensation, let those nerves heal, you know, like, uh, and that's it, you know, that's all you can really do from home, again, I have to wait, uh, now, what's today, Thursday now, I have to wait Friday, Saturday, Monday, and then Tuesday, finally, I have my appointment, um, um, but, so this is all I can do from home for now, um, but it's the best thing I could do, um, and I just wanted to share this experience with you so you know what to do um, if this ever happens to you. And hopefully it doesn't. Um, I really, really wish it didn't happen to me. Um, I know this is update 4, but I didn't mention it at all in uh, my first video, or the first update rather, or the beginning. But man, when that BB hit my finger, I can't even describe the feeling that it that I felt when it first shot into my finger like I could literally feel the f my bone in my finger vibrate it was the strangest feeling I've ever felt it was almost like it was sort of like I got electrocuted almost it, it was weird like it I can't say it was obviously painful but um the initial shock and sting goes away quick and then your adrenaline pumps when you see the blood pouring out and everything so I personally when that happens when I get an injury um, everybody reacts differently but um, I go instantly into calm mode um, the calmer you are the better you don't want your blood pressure to be pumping high when you have an injury because it's only going to cause you to bleed more so if you ever get an injury like this just remain calm assess the situation immediately and get to the hospital wrap it up you know if, obviously this is a bad spot to have an injury so i had to wrap a little tourniquet around my wrist and my finger um but uh say you get the injury up here you want to wrap down here make sure no blood flow can get to that injury site or at least as little as possible to, to control the bleeding um but you don't want to keep it that way for long because eventually you're going to want blood to be able to get through your fingers so the healing process can begin you know that's just to get everything under control but um anyways guys uh i don't know by the looks of it it seems like i'm gonna be fine uh like i said the pink inside already closed up on the first two days you could literally see like a hole like straight through almost um but i can see now that the pink has healed up um let me just turn this up so you guys can see me instead. Uh, I just came back so I have my little mask on. <laughs> I guess it's like kind of Halloween-ish a little bit. Uh, sorry guys, I just got this phone stand here. Uh, but yeah, COVID and everything, you know, just stay safe. But um, anyways guys, uh, you know, I really appreciate you watching my channel. Um, you know, I can't explain to you the, again, I, I say this all the time because I, I really truly mean it from the bottom of my heart. Um, the views and the kindness that I've been getting from you guys is awesome. Um, you, you all are just awesome. You know, I didn't know what to expect when I started this channel, but you know, it's, I've been getting nothing but positive feedback and I really, really appreciate that guys. Um, it means a lot to me because, um, I try, you know, I try to put a lot of effort into my videos. These are my first uh, videos, my first channel, so I hope you all stick with me. Uh, I'll be fine, you know, this will never happen again. Uh, but since it did happen, you know, I figured I'd share it with you. So um, you have a first-hand account, you know. Again, as I said, I shoot uh, things like phones and stuff to show you an example of how deep and powerful these BBs can be. But since, you know, I did it to myself, I said, hey, you know, well, there's a perfect example there. Just do it yourself. Show them yourself, you know. Um, so anyways, guys, just be careful. Um, I'm going to start working on that Colt M45 review maybe today. Um, I want to get back in the game. You know, my finger's healing up and everything. Uh, I think I can manage doing things on camera now. Um, 
or at least I'll try anyway, um, with both hands. And um, other than that, you know, I appreciate you all. Um, I hope you all stay safe. You know, if you have any uh, CO2 guns, just, you know, take it from me. And uh, just think twice, always think twice. Even if you think you know, just just check. Just check anyway. It doesn't hurt, you know. But other than that, peace out, guys. I love you. Um, and wish me well, man. Thanks. Hey, guys. So um, this is now update five. I figured um, yesterday would be my last update. But I figured since I just washed my uh, wound that I just give you a little quick update I won't torture you anymore with this um this video might be a little bit long um but again if you're squeamish I'm going to show you my cut now um I just finished washing it so uh look away if you don't like looking at cuts it's not that bad though um but um uh, that's it now um I'll try to focus on it better uh, you get the idea though um anyways the white skin around the wound. Last night I left it dry. I finally decided to just put a dry band-aid on it after cleaning it and as you can see the white skin disappeared. Um, the wound is actually closing. I don't have full range of motion yet. Um, as you can see it's easier to make a flat hand now but it still won't go all the way up. Um, and I can make a fist but I can't make it like a tight white knuckle fist like that. Like, um, so this hand, I don't think I could punch with that hand if I wanted to. Um, unless I hit you on this side, but, uh, I would never do that to somebody. I'm just using that as an example. Um, oh wow, look, you could even see, I guess, between the knuckles swelled a little too. Because you can see the, uh, curve. And then it just goes like, whoop. It's like, uh. I don't know, I, I just noticed that myself, but um, as you can see, it's getting better for sure. I have faster mobility for sure. It still feels very tingly and numb though. Um, there still is a foreign object in my finger. The BB never came out. It's a steel .177 caliber BB, 4.5 millimeters, so that hole is 4.5 millimeters in diameter or circumference, um, so it's not you know totally fixed yet just because I have mobility on um, there's still the tingliness and there's still a foreign object in my hand and they might have to take that out so again just keep taking antibiotics keep cleaning it as I've showed you like I'm doing now um, put that peroxide on there see like I haven't done it since last night I just finished cleaning the house so um just leave it till it fizzes up uh, when you see the bubbles start to disappear a little bit, you know, just keep pouring until you just stop seeing it fizz up, basically. Um, because as I said, the fizzing is actually the interaction between the, the hydrogen peroxide and anything that it's um, killing, basically, bacteria things like that um, so you definitely want to have that there um, at this point in the, in the game I'm not sure if the iodine is even helpful but uh, I figured it can't hurt you know like what's the harm in just putting a little iodine on there um, oh, I still got uh, Saturday Sunday and Monday to go with this so I want to try to keep it as clean as possible I have the antibiotics fighting from the inside any infection and I've been going at it from the outside so um, other than that see you can see the white bubbles are starting to like disappear a little bit like it's not foaming up as much oh that one did so there's a little bit work to do but you don't have to continue doing this I do it till the white bubbles disappear but you know for the most part that's good already you can see it's disappearing quickly so there's not much left reacting with it uh, let me just get it in the cracks or try if there's anything left the pink i know you can't see on camera has totally closed up on um, so it's just a surface hole at this point i'm not sure inside how much it closed up um i would imagine if the pink on the top closed that the whole wound is closed around the bb um, but that could be just my speculation. I have to go to the hand specialist and see. Let me just grab some tissue quickly. Let me just 
so I'll wipe that off. Just want to keep that clean, you know. I used soap and water before the video, um, right after I cleaned the house. Um, now I'm just going to simply take a band aid. Um, always have band aids in your house, they're always handy, obviously, you know, um, because you know they stick. So a tourniquet is necessary if you have an injury like this or you know something deeper. Um, but if you have a cut or anything like that you definitely want to have a band-aid you don't want to throw a rag over it like I had to the other day um, a band-aid would not suffice with the amount of blood that was coming out of this cut when I first did it um, but so I had no choice but to throw a rag it had went through the wash and everything but still you know like you don't know what's on that like even if it's in a closet and it had been through the wash and dryer so um Anyways, basically, that's it, guys. Um, just keep it clean. When you get to the doctor, they'll take it from there. And, you know, just continue what they say. Um, but until then, this is how you would, you know, the best I can do anyway. This is how you would take care of it. Um, just make sure you keep moving it, like I said. Look out for any colors. If the swelling persists, that means the injury is persisting. Um, but the swelling has gone down significantly. It's still swollen. You can still see the puffiness, which is expected. It's only a few days after, but um, still, you know, um, I, I still got to be careful because there's still a, a foreign object inside of my finger. Um, so I don't want to do any more damage and force it like uh, too much, you know. So I've just been letting it go on its own, but helping a little. Um, for example, like even though it won't go down totally. I'll just go like this and just push it. It hurts a little, very little, but it's good to do, you know, like give it that mobility, let it know again that it can go down that far because you can get stuck if you did uh, bad nerve damage um, and it heals without you moving it, it can get stuck. See, now my finger's throbbing for doing that, um, like over here, uh, shit sucks, uh, pardon my French. but. Uh, Anyways, guys, once again, I love you all. Peace. Uh, maybe I'll do a video after the hospital, but um, anyways, uh, I'm going to do the review on the uh, Colt M45, maybe. I'll start it today. Um, and, you know, again, I love you. Peace. I could do it now. Look. Um, wish me luck. And that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.